Okay then, peeps. So, I have been away out of the country working for the last week on some stuff. So I'm now playing catch up with the uh, videos that I need to do for the B450 launch. So there's a new chipset that's just come out from AMD and it's called B450 and it sits in underneath the X470 ones. Now essentially the B450 is a more accessible chipset in that it's not quite as expensive. Uh, but it doesn't really lack a great deal, if I'm honest. More often than not, what you're going to find are the B450 boards are going to be slightly uh, cheaper because they're going to be built slightly cheaper. Weirdly, this one is going to be the exception to the rule. Um, normally with the B450 chipset, they're going to be kind of aimed at people that might be running one of the APUs, so like the 2200G or the 2400G, you'll probably find that all of the boards will come with onboard video. Now the onboard video, that doesn't mean that you can pop any CPU in. The onboard video will only work if it's an APU. An APU is like the 2200G or the 2400G because then the graphics card is on the CPU itself. Connecting a uh, APU with a dedicated GPU, there's no real way to crossfire or anything like that anymore, so you kind of choose one or the other. So if you go with the APU, you don't have a graphics card. If you want a dedicated graphics card, then you can still get a Ryzen 3 quad core without the APU. It just means that rather than connecting your um, uh, HDMI or DisplayPort onto the actual motherboard, you connect it to the graphics card itself. I do apologize if I am explaining this in too kind of an in-depth way for those enthusiasts that, you, uh, that are out there that might be interested in this, but I do seem to get these questions quite a bit, so I'm just trying to make sure I cover all the points. So the B450 boards are more than likely gonna have um, onboard video for those of you that have an APU. That's a great thing. But today we're gonna be looking at the uh, B450 i Strix. Now, you can click the link to go to the OC3D website and I, t I test all of my AM4 boards the same. I do stress them out quite a lot. I I'm using the 2700X and I have done on all the B450 boards. So when you go to the OC3D website and you can see some of the graphs that pop up, you'll be able to see that they're in there with all the X470 boards as well. Now that is quite a good and a bad thing. It's good because we can compare them all, but it's bad for some of these boards in that I stress them out with a CPU, an eight core 16 thread CPU, that some of you might not um, be really that worried about at home. But at the end of the day, if the eight core goes in and works all right, and you don't get too many issues, if you drop down to a six or a four core, you're gonna be absolutely golden. So please kind of take those points in mind as well. So the Strix board. In all honesty, this is basically the X470i Strix with a slightly different chipset. It's literally, the layout is exactly the same. You've got, um, you've got RGB at the top, both the normal four pin and the addressable uh, three pin. You've got three CPU um, or fan headers, whatever you'd like to call it. You're probably eyeballing this thing here. Well, this is a daughter board for your audio, but it's also just underneath an M.2 slot as well. And the M.2 goes underneath the heat sink at the top, so you've got some cooling for it. There's a second M.2 port around the back. Yes, I am trying to whiz through this because in all honesty, like I said, it's the same board as before. You've got a couple of vertical SATAs down the side, USB 3, and then when you whiz around the back, you've got some USB 3 um, uh, ports around here, gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, eight pin CPU power, and then six phases down the side. And you do get some extra ones, so you get an extra phase over here for the memory, you got a phase for the sock. So it's, 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 uh, it's basically as good as the X470 one was. But, so where it's B450, essentially, they're telling me that this is going to be 159 pounds. Now, it's a great board, it performs well, it's gonna tick all your boxes. But the problem is I've been able to find the uh, X470 one online today for a hundred and uh, sort of 175. So this is going to be 160. You can find the X470 for 175. So one of the things is, is the step down worth the saving money? It's going to depend what you're after really because the bulk of you aren't really going to see a bit of a difference. If you're not worried about your spec list and all of that sort of stuff, and it's a place for you to cut a little bit of money and then you'll be able to then run off and spend that money on something else, then it's all win-win. But if you've got the extra £15, 
then it's kind of a little bit of a different, you know, sort of, it is a bit of a difficult kind of choice. If it was me personally, I'd probably pay the extra £15 and get the X470 model, especially if I was going to get one of the high six or eight core CPUs. If you're not, and you're just thinking about an APU or one of the early um, uh, Ryzen 3s, then why not save the money and get yourself this? If you do get one of the eight cores, then one, one thing that I would say is that you're gonna need some active cooling around the board somewhere. You don't necessarily need a fan blowing down, but with a big manual overclock, this little heatsink can get a bit overwhelmed um, and you can experience some thermal throttling. But you have to be an absolute eejit to do it. So I had to do it in a red hot room with no airflow around the board whatsoever. So I was pretty much being the most horrible person I could to it. But it is possible. If you've got an air CPU cooler blowing anywhere near it, it will stay within those thresholds. I'd love to say that I have an exact temperature for you, but Asus are doing some funny stuff in the BIOS at the moment where you can't really get a chance to, uh, well, you don't get any chance to see the VRM temps whatsoever. And because of short times and the fact that I've been away traveling for work, I've not been able to uh, break it apart to actually do some manual testing myself. But like I said, if you've got it in a case with airflow, you'll be absolutely fine. If you've got a downdraft uh, CPU cooler on it, it will cope with an eight core absolutely, like literally, it will have no issues whatsoever. Um, and even if you've got airflow this way, then you'll be good. If you've got it in a case with some fans sucking out the top, again, it will be absolutely fine. It's just literally open air, next to no airflow, being horrible to it in a 28 degrees room was the only time that I did manage to stress it. But to be honest with you, I don't think a lot of you are gonna buy this B450 board and then put eight cores on it anyway. So I'm probably drawing attention to something that doesn't really need to be drawn attention to. So the long and short of it is, is the B450 ITX Strix any good? Yes, it's a cracking board. It's just as good as the X470. And that's the problem really, is the fact that there's 15 pounds between the two. So in all honesty, if you wanna save the 15 quid, then you know this is a uh, great board to go for. If you've got an extra 15 quid spare, not gonna order that pizza, I'd probably go for the more expensive one. So it's all gonna be down to you and exactly what you want to do with it. But it didn't disappoint. I just, I don't know. Something did inside me think it may have been about 20 pounds cheaper. All in all though, cracking little board. It's just gonna be for you to decide whether you want this or the slightly more expensive one, depending on the CPU that you're gonna put in and the, the, the sort of stuff that you're gonna do with the rest of the system. I'd imagine though, quite a lot of you are gonna look at this and go, I'm just gonna save a few quid because literally everything other than a chipset is exactly the same as the dearer one.